I have not, you know, kicked the hornet's nest of the robot overlords coming to your door in a while. But this past week, I was watching an update on kind of the latest in humanoid robots. And I got to tell you, at least when the robots show up at your door to drag you into the street, you're going to have your choice of which one you want to do it based on this update. And joking aside, I actually am really impressed with how far humanoid robots have come in. Jeez, we're not even through 2024 and the advancements in this. There's the figure AI 02 now that's out. There's the four-year GR2. There's the at 1X Technologies Neo. There's the Boston Dynamics Atlas. There's the Tesla Tesla bot next generation. I mean, these things are like popping off all over the place. And... I will say, you know, they haven't fully eliminated the creepy factor. You, you look at these things moving around and you're kind of like, boy, if that thing was walking around my house, I don't know how comfortable I would feel. But they're coming in a long ways in terms of making them more approachable. And, you know, they're, they got these soft outer covers that make them <laughs> huggable, I guess. And I was watching one. I can't remember if it's the GR2 or the Neo that I was watching this video and it's like, they're training these things to be, now there's different use cases. So let's talk about use cases here. Cause it's all over the map. And so you might go to like the Tesla bot and go, Christopher, what are you talking about? Like, that's clearly an industrial, they've got an industrial plan for what they want to do with that or figure AI's O2. All I saw was this thing in like a manufacturing floor doing stuff. Yes, there's a wide case of wide range of use cases and each one of these AI humanoid robot companies is going down their own unique pathway. So let's talk about some of these use cases that are starting to emerge. Um, and for folks who are going, oh my gosh, the robots are taking over human jobs. I'm actually really impressed, even in a lot of the marketing stuff and some of even just the reactions from people. I think people are recognizing like, ah, uh, these aren't coming for human workers anytime soon. And not only just because anytime soon the technology is not there, just the way they work and this, the value they add is not necessarily human. I think most people would look at what they're doing and go, good, finally. Like we've needed people to do this. It was the job we all dreaded. And now we've got a robot that can take care of it so we can focus on some other things. Uh, so for the folks who hear the humanoid robot thing and think, oh my gosh, you know, is this a threat to jobs? I actually think even the companies are recognizing that that's not really where they're going to fit in, at least not the jobs that really are distinctly human. Um, you know, might there be some remaining, you know, purely automation jobs or things like that, that might I, possibly, and quite frankly, the generations of these robots I'm seeing in 2024 already, I'm like, well, they may not be that far out and they're already implementing them in a number of manufacturing floors. So if you are somebody in that space who's seen one of these things walking around, let me know. I've got a, I've got a episode dropping at the end of this month with somebody who specializes in humanoid robot development. They're an engineer on these. And we talked at length about some of this stuff. Um, so check that one out. But you know, where we're seeing it, the space race for space exploration and where we can go with that is pushing hard. And honestly, <laughs> the robots, and I'm not, I'm not laughing about this. The poor, I am laughing, but like in a sad, tragic laugh, the poor people who are stuck on the space station. Okay. It's a perfect example of why there's really so much potential value in humanoid robots for space exploration and space activity, because you know, hey, if somebody's going to get stuck in space or if a space shuttle is going to blow up in outer space, wouldn't we rather have humanoid robots beyond that than human beings? Now, granted, going back to the job loss, might there be some humans who are a little bit unnerved by the fact that robots might be doing some of that work? Maybe, but I would even wager a bet that especially the two stuck on the space station, they probably would have much rather had a humanoid robot sent up there so they didn't have to spend the better part of a year stuck in space because we couldn't get a rocket up there to bring them home. And so I think that's one big area of focus is how can we develop these? That's a major sector where the humanoid robots are going. 
Labor shortages is a huge one right now. I mean, I know there's a lot of talk about job shortages and people not having, you know, jobs and it's tragic, but it's not because there's a lack of work. And I think that's one of the biggest disconnects companies need to work through is the fact that it's not that there's not enough work to be done. It's that companies have not only this major disconnect, but people, we tend to be like, well, but I've only ever done this. So I'm looking for that job instead of going, yeah, but couldn't you do all these different things? What if we put you in something different than what you've always done? And people are uncomfortable with it, but it's not just people's fault. Companies don't know what to deal with it. I can tell you being unemployed and talking to people all the time, a lot of times they don't know what to do with me because they're like, well, we don't really have a full-time role that fits your persona or capabilities. I'm like, are you serious? But the work needs to get done. You just acknowledge the work needs to get done. So this is where I think there is some risk that organizations may over-index on robots, but the reality is there's more work to be done than there are people on the planet. And with our population rate declining, this problem is only going to get worse as people continue retiring. So that's another area that this is heavily being looked into is how can it augment this, especially in high risk or highly repetitive areas, which still exist. We'd like to think like every manufacturing floor is fully automated now. It's not. And there's a lot of very robotic activity that's still happening from people where people could focus on other things rather than that. And I think that's where, yes, is there some job loss risk? Potentially. But I think if we as people adapt and companies adapt, there's still more work to be done than there is people. So I wouldn't worry about that. The other one that is really interesting is in home use, almost kind of more of this, wouldn't it be great to have a robot take care of all these activities that you hate doing, like folding your laundry, which family of 10 here, believe me, we got no shortage of it. I'll, I would gladly buy a robot that would wash our clothes and dry them and fold them and put them away. Like that alone is a full-time job at our house. So that's another market they're going into um, that I think that one, I think is a little further out again, going back to just what I know about people, maybe being a little more uncomfortable. I think you're going to see these start to pick up in the wealthy, the elite who can afford to pay 50 grand to have a robot clunk around their house and take care of some of the stuff. Um, and then healthcare is another big one where, you know, the use of some of the things we've, and again, we've got shortages in these areas where they go, we don't have enough healthcare workers and a lot of healthcare work is very robotic. And so there's some real value in having these humanoid robots who can take care of some of this stuff. Um, so pretty cool to see where it's going a little unnerving, but to me, I actually feel more comfortable with this sector of AI and robotics not going off the rails than some of the other areas. Because to me, this one, there's just too much risk associated with it and people see that risk. And so they have to mitigate it because they know if a robot goes off the chain and it's got a hydraulic or electric motor that can lift a thousand pounds, you don't want that thing accidentally swinging and taking somebody's head off. So there's just a lot more detail and risk that has to be regulated and they know that. Versus things like, look, we made image modification app on everybody's phone. You can make your memories be whatever you want them to be. Who cares? Like, it's a little easier to just do that without any thought versus robotics. So I actually have less concerns about these robotic pieces than some of the other ones. But pretty cool. You know, it's amazing to see how they're moving from hydraulics to electric motors and how that's changing the potential and the capacity of these things and even the size and mobility. It's I mean, honestly, if you have not gone and looked at humanoid robots, I'd highly encourage you to do it. I think you'll have your mind blown a bit.